Hey folks and welcome to Truck King. This is the 2024 Toyota Tacoma and it is all new. It has a brand new frame, new power plant, new interior and we went straight to the source to find out about it. So in this video we're going to talk to Tacoma Chief Engineer Sheldon Brown about what went into this brand new truck. Make sure you stay tuned. So first question I want to ask is when you guys had your very first meeting, you sat down and said, okay, we time to redesign the Tacoma. What are the priorities? What are the things that we are focused on for the new generation of truck that we know we need to improve on, you know, on what we have today? What were the things you were really focused on with the 2024? Yeah. Uh, great question. Uh, and so, uh, when we go back and you know go back in my time machine here and, and sit back down in that meeting, we uh, we we started with really uh, actually even as far back as Tundra, we were when we were planning the platform, we wanted to make sure that we were building a platform that was going to be multifunctional for a number of different vehicles. So as you know, the TNGF platform we're using. Uh, Tundra, Sequoia, Tacoma. So even at that time, we had to have some basic concepts of what we wanted to bring to the table for Tacoma so that we could either package, protect, or design to include. So that really started uh, back at the platform design. Um, in earnest, when we got going on and what we'd call the, the CE concept, um, that was uh, where we really are focusing, hyper, hyper focused on what Tacoma is. And so we always start by taking a look at the market and we try to assess our vehicle and we see what is it that our customers uh, like the most. Um, what is it that they dislike the most? Uh, where do we anticipate uh, the market headed? And then for our particular case, um, we took a really special, I guess, I don't want to say special, but a, a particularly strong interest in thinking, you know, we, we, we've been fortunate to have a segment leadership for, for quite a long time now, uh, going on 20 years. Uh, and uh, we wanted to make sure that we were pushing um, the envelope because we didn't, you know, we couldn't look backwards. The the segment actually, most of the trucks in the segment were uh, coming up on a new refresh. So, you know, sort of benchmarking and getting a sense where your, your competition might be is really not available when everybody's working on the next one. So we knew we wanted to be, you know, that next step forward to make sure that we uh, made Tacoma uh, where it needed to be. So specifically to your question, um, yeah. You know, we, we started with some of those, those what we thought were really important. We, you've heard me maybe other times say talk about garageability. That was one thing that we knew was was critically important. Uh, keeping the overall size of the truck intact, uh, bumper to bumper, we haven't changed it a millimeter, door to door, keeping it the same. Um, but we knew that we were going to be extending the wheelbase and we wanted to also, you know, uh, ex expand the, uh, the tread width as well. So those were two tenets, right? We had to balance that truck shape. Um, obviously, uh, the other areas that we wanted to look at were some of the foibles uh, that, you know, people had, uh, I'll say, you know, uh, made some complaints about or had said to us that, you know, we'd like to see improved, uh, specifically to the vehicle architecture and packaging. That was the the seating position and the overall comfort inside of the, of the cabin. So we spent a lot of time making sure that we uh, increased what we call our heel to hip uh, ratio. Uh, and then, of course, adjusted for the headroom so that we could basically raise that customer up a little bit so you're not in that sort of flat seating position. And making sure that we had vertical adjustability and, and everything for the steering. Uh, and then, of course, uh, was, you know, powertrain and drivability. That was going to be a big one. This was going to be a new platform that was going to have to last us for a bunch of years. And so we needed to upgrade all of, I'll say, the foundational components of the platform uh, from, you know, adopting like things like EPS, uh, new braking packages, uh, the powertrain in and of itself, uh, and making sure that we are hyper focused on uh, delivering a really good, uh, I'll say, on road dynamic performance to the customer. So, when we looked at that, you know, we really took a special effort. We called it a Trinity Group. We pulled a special team together that said, uh, we're going to balance uh, noise, vibration, and harshness, fuel economy, and drivability. You know, it's always, uh, it's easy to understand fuel economy, and it's easy to measure noise, noise, vibration. Very difficult to talk about, you know, how do we want the, the truck to perform? What is good drive force? What feels good across a bunch of different um, uh, scenarios? So we actually looked to some of our big data uh, where we could actually pull driving patterns from customers. Uh, we could understand what those uh, what those were and how they were uh, basically interfacing with the vehicle and use those to help set up our, our drive force uh, uh, maps for, for the next generation powertrain. Mm -hmm. You know what, talking about the way it drives right there, um, mm -hmm. I'm curious as to how similar the rear suspension is now with the Tundra, because I know you've moved away from leaf springs. I know I think it's just the base truck, the SR. I don't even know, if, does SR5 get leaf springs as well, or is it just SR? 
there is one there is one specification where you can have a leaf on SR5, but effectively the way you think about it, decab SR5 and above is all is all uh, multi-link suspension or coil suspension, and then the uh, basically the SR grade or the extra cab in the SR grade is where you, you start to get in. We we have an exception on the, on the pre runner, uh, but again that, that sort of follows the cab. Uh, and that was actually, I'm glad you brought that up because that was important. That was never part of the original TNGF platform, uh, I'll say ultimate scope or design. But with Tacoma, um, you know, we're, we're, we've got a, a wide range of customers from the, you know, I'll say the very value focused entry level customer all the way up to the, you know, someone who's saying, look, I want a full size truck in, a, in, in the right size. So um, that's where we wanted to bring additional value. And we thought that for that customer that says, hey, look, you know what? I just like a truck. I've been driving trucks my whole life. It you know, looks like a truck, drives like a truck, feels like a truck. Uh, so we, we wanted to make sure that we provided that solution. So that was an important, uh, I'll say, new addition to the Tacoma platform. Sure, gotcha. Okay, um, yeah, I mentioned just before we got on the interview, but I, I've been looking at the spec sheet from the old truck and the new truck quite a bit today because I'm putting together a video comparing them. So they're kind of the numbers are fresh in my head. So I have a couple okay. questions based on the numbers. Sure. Um, the first one is is the overall tow rating on the new truck is actually down just slightly, right? Two hundred pounds uh, compared yep. to the last truck. Can you just speak to a why that is, but then b also you know, to customers, what, what's the customer feedback that you hear on tow rating in this segment? Because frankly, I don't think it's a big deal. I don't think it needed to go up much higher. These trucks probably shouldn't be towing 10,000 pounds, right? But I'm, I'm curious to hear your, your thoughts on that as well, sort of, you know, where these trucks should be. So those two questions, if you can speak to those. Yeah, no, happy to. And I, and thanks for bringing it up because it's, it's important. And uh, it's one of those areas, you know, as a chief engineer, when you start to decide what you want the truck to do, uh, if you want it to do uh, everything, you probably are going to deliver something that doesn't, um, you know, it doesn't do anything well, right? And so we were very focused on saying, okay, we're going to have priorities and we're going to put our priorities on what we want our trucks, uh, our, our trucks to do. And then and, and there's going to be other areas uh, when we say if we are going to do it, we're going to do it very, very well. So not provide it necessarily in a compromise range. So we started with our tow ratings and we took a look at the outgoing model and uh, we started, we surveyed a number of our customers and really um, just just to sort of put these in back of the napkin numbers for you. Uh, once you start to go above 6,000 pounds, uh, you find that most people in the compact segment, uh, they have very few people are towing consistently uh, more than that, that, rate, that weight rating. So we felt we wanted to be very close to, to the current generation vehicle. Um, obviously, the, the new generation vehicle I talked a little bit about, it you know got a little bit taller. We got a little bit wider in the fenders, right? So we increased, uh, we, we put a lot more lifts on these trucks than, than we have in the past. That sort of overall uh, increased our road load. And so uh, one of the areas that we were going to have to make a trade-off for was between, um, are we going to develop this truck that can tow, say, 7,000 or 7,500 uh, pounds, which means we're going to give up some of our ride compliance in our suspension because we want to tow well. And then we're going to have to open up our cooling package to make sure that we're able to uh, to achieve, you know, when we when we set out to, for example, if we're going to run Baker grade, we have a set, you know, keep the the speed limit uh, high temperature, no uh, no degradation in terms of, of or, or depowering of the of the vehicle. So when we say we've got a posted tow rating, we're going to be able to tow that under all circumstances. We never want to put the customer in, in a situation where they feel like oh they're not keeping up or they're falling behind traffic and you know not sure if they're going to make it up the grade. So that would have meant that we would have had to open up our cooling area, which would have meant we would increase the overall drag on the truck, which would have reduced our fuel economy. So when you start to chase the corner numbers, uh, you start to give up in other areas. And so that's why we wanted to make sure that we had, you know, 99% of our, our, our customers need covered. Um, and then and then we were able to deliver a, what we felt is a really solid towing performance on the, on the truck. Gotcha. Well, that's a great answer. I appreciate that. And um, yeah, we're going to be driving the truck next week. So we haven't driven it yet, but I'm excited to, okay. of course, put a trailer behind it and, and feel it towing for sure. Yeah, please. And I think hopefully we've got the integrated trailer brake control and everything in there. So some some trailer tech that previous generation didn't have in terms of the uh, uh, backup assist to keep the trailer straight, especially you got a short wheelbase truck and a short wheelbase uh, trailer that can always be uh, be a lot of fun when, <laughs> when you're on a loaded uh, or on a crowded uh, you know, boat ramp or something like that. Everybody watching. So we got some technology in there to help. That's awesome. Um, so you also mentioned fuel economy, and I'm happy you brought mm -hmm. that up because fuel economy with this, Jen, I was going over the numbers on the sheet, and mm -hmm. there's some jumps as big as three miles per gallon. I think that was mostly highway numbers. But then mm -hmm. overall combined, it was like one to two miles per gallon better for the new generation. So can you speak to, and, and of course, you have to mention in the same sentence that the power is way up too. So can That's you it. then speak to how you, know, how you achieve the better fuel economy numbers? 
Yeah, uh, no, no worries there. Um, so yeah, we've got uh, on average, if you took about, we're about two miles per hour or two MPG combined roughly. Um, as, as you said, a lot of that you'll see on, on the highway side. And of course it depends on the configuration. Um, but yeah, the, you know, um, we made the truck, like I mentioned, we made the truck, the wheelbase is longer. It got a little bit wider. We got a little bit taller, you know, we increased the overall aero load. So, but more importantly, to your point, we've actually significantly increased the the torque uh, and the torque delivery uh, for the for the vehicle. So uh, we're kind of balancing all of that. Um, really, where that where we get the the big benefit, of course, is the L4 turbo, and then the pairing of that with our new eight speed uh, automatic transmission, and the ability to basically have the the high drive force available at lower RPM, so that we can operate uh, with less boost, and we can also operate. Um, you know, at, at a lower engine speed with a very uh, more, I'll say, segregated um, uh, short uh, gear interval with the, with the transmission allows us to deliver that kind of uh, that kind of performance. Um, so those were really the two big things that that, that pushed us forward. Um, obviously, there's technology that's happening all the time in tires, helping with uh, you know the rolling resistance of the tires and improving that. Um, specifically, in a, in a lot of our off-road tires, we you know our BFG tire, I think uh, the 32 that we've got on our, our off-road package. It's an incredible tire. Uh, it's super grippy off-road, but uh, uh, got great rolling resistance on-road. So a really good balance of off-road and on-road dynamics. Nice. Okay, uh, you mentioned transmissions too. I wanted to, first of all, say thank you for keeping the manual. We appreciate still having the manual option. Unfortunately, I can't get my manual TRD Pro anymore, but maybe you guys will change that down the line. Um, my, my question for you on the manuals is simple. You've probably heard this one a bunch. Why is the power output slightly different for the manual transmission as compared to the automatic? Yeah, so so um, good question. And and I have actually got that. A couple of people have asked it. So it's only a few, uh, I think we go from uh, 279 to uh, to uh, 210, or sorry, to 270. Uh, and the 70, big difference yeah. there, what's that? Yeah, 270, yeah. So the, the big difference there is, um, uh, we we have a RPM limit, uh, especially uh, in the first gear at 50, well, even across the board at 5,400 RPM. Um, so the difference between the peak power is the difference in about the 8, 900 RPM between the, the manual and the automatic. And, and the reason for that was um, as we started to look and we we're using this uh, six speed manual transmission, um, you know, we have to balance uh, NV performance. And so we were getting a little bit of crankshaft hammering once we start to get in those higher RPM. So there's things that you can do to offset that um, with, without reducing horsepower. Uh, things like, uh, you know, adding uh, dynamic dampers through the, the drive line system. Um, you could potentially change the weight of the flywheel or something along that line. Uh, we, we didn't want to do those things. We wanted a little heavier flywheel so that when you're lugging in low gears, especially off road, uh, you know, you don't have that, uh, you've got the momentum to kind of help you keep moving and it's easy to operate and control. Um, you know, dynamic dampers, they just, they just add mass and cost. So when we looked at the overall, most people don't live in the world of, of peak horsepower all the time, right? Most people want good drive force across, you know, the, the broader range. So we thought that that was a good compromise. Uh, and that was sort of the, you know, so someone has to take the bullet. That was me. Yeah, interesting. No, that's cool. That, that's, I was just, I was looking at it. That's just, you don't see it yeah. that often. So that's no, you don't. Um, and um, but that was, like I said, that was our, I thought, uh, a good compromise for what we want to do in terms of total performance. Sure. Well, it sounds like a practical consideration, and one which nobody's going to miss nine pounds, pound feet of torque. That's right. Yeah, what, nine uh, yeah. What, what, what do you expect the take rate to be for the manual? Well. Um, we're 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 going to be somewhere between six and ten percent. Um, we're optimistic uh, that uh, the fact that we're one of the the last uh, manuals around uh, that uh, we might see some influx um, for those who are really serious about uh, driving a manual transmission. We're doing about f about six percent today uh, every single day, so we're confident in that number. And and honestly, we really wanted to provide this for our enthusiasts. Um, you know, it's there's people who are diehard and they just said, look, you know, I, I love off-roading. I love the third dimension that the third pedal gives me, you know, when I'm out there, you know, picking lines and, and, and moving through through obstacles. So uh, that was important. And then there's the folks that, you know, they love doing it on road as well. So we took that and complimented it. We added some stuff. We wanted to not just, you know, we, 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 uh, we did two things I think that were important. One, we removed the hydraulic accumulator. Um, which really allows us to get consistent um, pedal, and, or I should say, clutch engagement now. Uh, so if you drove the old, the, the previous generation, sometimes you know the, you, where the throw, where where you get good engagement through the, the the clutch stroke was, you know, a little bit hit or miss. So this really gives a lot better feel, I think, for the driver, especially for all, like an off road condition where you really want to know when that clutch is is engaging. And then the second one was we, we gave you IMT two. 
that's intelligent manual transmission too. And, and that's just a really cool technology. You don't need it, but if you want it, you know, turn the button on, it rev matches for you. It's got anti-stall control. It's a great way to, you know, teach somebody to learn a, learn a manual because it, it sort of takes over and helps you out and gives you a little a blip or flare of the, of the engine RPM when you're losing torque or drive force. So um, again, you don't have to use it every day, but it's nice on those days when you don't want to row the gears. Hmm. Yeah, interesting. So if you just dump the clutch in first gear, it will not stall. It'll it'll manage to add enough torque to to keep it going. I, I won't say it won't stall. I mean, it's it's not okay. it's not uh, completely foolproof, but uh, it it's very forgiving, very very it's forgiving. Help. That's right, Got exactly. It. Mm -hmm. Got it. That's cool, man. Um, do you want to quickly uh, speak on the uh, the disc brakes in the rear end? I'm sure once again that was something you heard a lot of. <laughs> it's something we always heard a lot about the drum brakes. <laughs> Uh, so, you know, why why finally have you gone to, to disc brakes? Yeah, so, you know, it's interesting. Um, when you think about through the development, um, we had drum brakes, uh, and I think the drum brakes performed, you know, th there was nobody ever, nobody liked the drum brakes, uh, or I shouldn't say nobody. There were those who did not care for the drum brakes, but nobody ever said my truck doesn't stop, right? So they actually yeah. did a very good job. They're very, they were very serviceable. Uh, honestly speaking, they're they're quite uh, cost effective as well in terms of from a maintenance standpoint of view. But you know, there's additional technology that we're bringing to this truck. Um, the truck is you know capable of of uh, now a lot of, for example, uh, braking and uh, for example, rear cross traffic alert where we auto brake for you. Uh, we have the electronic parking brake. These were things that we are going to be moving to this next generation of, of uh, I'll say, chassis uh, hardware layout. And when you do that, you're not going to have a whole bunch of different designs, right? So we're, from an economy of scale standpoint of view, it was time that we, you know, uh, with this new generation, we wanted to move to this, you know, new, I'll say, uh, overall, um, you know, braking structure. And so uh, it's great because it does give us some some improved performance. Um, you'll notice we've we've got offered like three different brake packages. You know, on our, our lighter and in, in, in uh, entry level trucks, you get a 16 and a 16. You you move to a 17 when you move into like the TRD uh, off road or the TRD series in the front and a 16 in the rear. And then when you go to the one motor hybrid where the vehicles, or excuse me, or I Force Max, where the vehicles are a bit heavier, uh, we give you a 17 and a 17. So you got all that power, power, all that torque. You can stop the truck too. So. But that was it was really just the evolution of of moving to the to the next uh, you know disc brakes. In 2020, I would have loved to have done it, but it didn't make a lot of sense to to go back and, and develop a, a whole new uh, disc brake system for you know all the the VSC tuning and all the you know the the dynamics tuning need to be recomplete or redone um, for minimal I'll say customer value and, and for a very short run in time. So it just adds a lot of cost, or it would have added a lot of cost. Okay, Dad, do you have any more questions? You know what? There's there's not a, a single thing I I'm going to speak for myself that I've seen on the truck that I said, wow, you guys missed the boat on that. In fact, you you've definitely upgraded a number of things that have been there for a long time. And you know, just to talk about disc brakes for a second versus drum brakes, the weird thing to me was that the uh, the drum brake was fine. It just was the one thing that people could point at and say, it's so old. <laughs> yeah. They still have drum brakes, <laughs> to which I say, I'm old, but I it's still a... work. So what's your point? <laughs> so anyway, good on you guys for Thanks. hanging in. Because like you said, it, it financially, you know what? It made sense, right? So anyway, we've got something new to play with now. That's right. And, and you know, I, I can't wait to get you guys in the truck. Um, sorry that you couldn't uh, meet us at, at the at the event here last week. Um, it just uh, the two things I know you guys uh, uh, are big off roaders. I think you and I'm not sure which which trucks you're going to get a chance to, to, to drive, but I would highly recommend, uh, you know, put it through its paces on road. It's got uh, especially the off road package is, is uh, got an incredible on road, uh, I'll say, dynamic uh, feel now, and uh, but it's still extremely capable off-road. We, we didn't give up anything off-road. Um, but you know, the with the multi-link rear suspension, uh, with the new rigidity that we get out of the platform, with the mechanicals in in the you know the uh, like the Bilstein monotube with the piggyback reservoirs with the end stop control. I mean, we we spent a lot of time and energy putting I'll say real uh, real value based hardware into this into this product, um, so that we can take hardware together with specification together with you know dynamic performance tuning to really deliver the full package and and i think that's one thing i hope you'll get a chance to you know you can be the judge for yourself but 
I always tell the team in, in, in our dynamics team is, was fantastic through the development of this of just, you got to get it all right. The braking has to feel natural. The steering has to be confident. You've got to be able to uh, have good body control. And uh, overall, you know, the, the whole dynamic package has to come together to make it a great truck to drive. And uh, that was really our focus was, you know, making everything sort of uh, symbiotic and really feel like a complete package. So that's uh, that's what maybe I'm, one of the things we're most proud of is what we've been able to deliver in this truck. So uh, I hope you guys get a chance to drive it and really put it through the paces. That's the idea. Perfect. Yeah, I, th I think that's it for this one, Sheldon. And we appreciate your yeah. time in. And yeah, as Dad said, we're excited to drive it. We're going to be in a TRD off-road. And so okay. we will get a chance to take it off-road. So yeah, we'll definitely uh, we'll definitely test it to the, the best of our abilities. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, no, please do. And, you know, give it give the stabby disconnect uh, or the stabilizer bar disconnect a, a go. And, you know, check out the new traction control. Uh, oh, sorry, the multi-terrain select and the new crawl control features. Um, if you're familiar with the old one, we made some pretty significant steps in those. Um, and, uh, you know, you're going to get to see some really cool things like um, and some of the stuff that you won't even see under the hood. Uh, you know, you'll, the, the vehicle you'll be driving has got our, our high angle, high torque, uh, you know, front CV uh, joints. Those are designed specifically for those off road, like the ORP package. So when you're, you know, you're bound and you're, you're, you're putting all that torque through uh, a unique spline design just to make sure there. So we've done a lot to upgrade the hardware in these trucks to make sure that, you know, it really does uh, live up to the Tacoma name. Awesome. Right. We're excited. Thanks. The detail. Absolutely. We'll do our best to break it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, folks, that is it for this video. Now, you might have already seen this. We published a full specs comparison here on the channel already, looking at the old truck to the new truck. And we have a full review on this Tacoma already. So if you didn't see them yet, make sure you go check them out now. But honestly, it was great to talk to Sheldon and get some real insight on what went into this new Tacoma. And now, of course, I need to hear from you. So go into the comments. Let me know what you thought of the interview and what you think of the new truck. As always, while you're down below, don't forget to hit that like button, mash that subscribe button, hit join to become a member of Truck King, and then come right back here to the channel to see what we're testing next. See ya.